So I finally had a horrible, windy, rainy, snowy day. And so I've got around to doing my video on how to use my book and also how to use the Airtable database that is embedded into the book, but is also available kind of as a freestanding application. You'll find all the details in links down below. And here's the video introduction. In this video, I want to take you through my ebook and show you how I use my database to integrate into the ebook and then how you can kind of delve deeper into the ebook by opening up the, uh, the actual database and getting a kind of full view of that. So this is the ebook and this is the database. I'm currently looking at the sewing log. Uh, in the database and the contents page of the ebook. And so I do recommend that you first off sort of just go into this video introduction and just have a quick look at, you know, why I decided to write this ebook, what, my, what's sort of different about my approach uh, to gardening and my approach in this ebook as well. And sort of read through the introduction. And there's a little bit about using this book and most of that is going to be covered in this video. Uh, there's a little bit of background as to kind of how my mind works and how I apply that to gardening. And that might be useful because, you know, if you read that and you find that this is just nothing like the way that your mind works, then my approach to gardening might not be for you. And then we go into this uh, gardening framework section. So I've kind of stolen the idea of um, successional sowings from potatoes. So from this idea of first earlies, second earlies, early main crop, main crop and late crop. Um, or sometimes people call that late crop the Christmas potatoes. And it just seemed to me that that idea is really useful for all of gardening. So I've taken that and kind of expanded that into these kind of categories, like a continuous cropping, something that's continuously cropped, um, continuous sort of substitute cropping. So where you might, for example, always have some sort of spinach, but it might not always be true spinach. So for example, in summer, it might be New Zealand spinach and chard, and in winter, it might be true spinach um, you know, and at different times of the year, basically, you're kind of substituting something. You've always got something that you can use in cooking as a spinach, for example. And then I've got kind of the idea of super early, first early, second early, early main crop, main crop and late crop. So that's kind of the way that I've done it. And in my database, you'll find that in the successions table. And I'll just open the successions table up in the actual database here. Um, and basically this view here is a simple version of what I'm looking at. Let me just open the same one up there. So basically you can see that, you know, what I've got embedded in the ebook itself, just for convenience really, so you don't have to open anything, is just a view onto this exact same database. and it's really very powerful. So if we just go out, kind of go full screen on here, uh, you've got all the different types of things that I grow in my case, and all the different successions of them, you know, so super early peas and early pea, first early peas, back to sort of super late crop peas and the varieties that I recommend for each succession and sort of a little picture of those varieties and then when to sow them and plant them the main harvest period, um, the first harvest, and everything's done in terms of early September, sort of mid-September, late September type of dates. Because I don't believe there's any specific ideal date really for doing lots of things. Uh, it kind of varies depending on where you are in the country. So if you're sort of up north, then early September basically means the 1st of September. Whereas if you're sort of down south, then it might mean the, the 10th of September or something like that. Um, so, uh, yeah, so that's kind of the idea there. And let's see if we can just get back 
to right there, that's it. Um, and then a sort of bit about how I've implemented this framework in the book. So let's go back and you can see maybe here at the top of the screen, there's kind of what they call breadcrumbs. So this is the one we're currently looking at, my new gardening framework. But if you click here at the top, you'll see that it says gardening ebook. And I'm looking at the web version of it at the moment, but you can use it on your smartphone or your tablet. And there's also applications that you can download to use it on Windows and Mac. So that's the framework idea. And then I've got a little bit of sort of pros and cons of growing your own food. And that's where this color scheme comes in. So things that are red are things that I'm currently working on. Things that are green are things that are kind of finished in the kind of way I think about uh, so it's finished. Uh, you finished probably for this year. And then, you know, next winter when there's a rainy day, I'll come back and update it. Um, but it's good enough to use. And then amber, things that I'm currently sort of got published in draft. And they're okay, but I'm not really finished with them for this year. So I'm still sort of working on them. So we come to the basic section of the book. And this is where I put what I think of as all the sort of fundamental ideas and tools and techniques and things for gardening. And of course, there's been like a thousand books written <laughs> on the basics of gardening. So I don't really dwell too much on this because, you know, pretty much any gardening book you pick up is going to cover most of these things. But I do go through sort of the way that I do planning, the way I do sewing, the way I use grow lights, the way I harden off. So I'm trying to put in here my view. And the reason that I think that is useful is that you then get a kind of coherent system. So if you pick up a gardening book, a lot of them are pretty vague about what to do uh, or they're too opinionated. Um, and, you, you know, what I'm trying to get here is not vague. I'm trying to be as prescriptive as I can be for somebody who's following my system. If you're not following my system, which is documented in this ebook, then obviously you've just kind of got to interpret it for yourself. Uh, anyway, I'll go through bed prep and planting and all of that. So a lot of people say, well, there's no videos of you sewing, Steve. Can we see you sewing? We'll go into the sewing section and you'll see some videos of me sewing, for example. So. Um, you know, and then more slightly more advanced things like looking after the soil, dealing with pests, dealing with weeds, making frames, making raised beds, coal frames, tunnels and all of that sort of thing. And I was particularly pleased with this section um, because I just had a lot of fun writing it uh, on some rainy days last year. And so I go through all the kind of bits and pieces you need, you know, the screws, the polythene, the mesh, the staples, you know, all of, all of those sorts of things. Uh, there's a video as well at the top that sort of takes you through it, but all the brackets and all of that sort of thing. Kind of my philosophy, you know, the way that I approach designing the plot. Um, and I just made the video, it's a bit bigger. Um, you know, how I designed the sort of layout of my plot, how I sized everything. And then how I assemble all the bits by, we like, a, like a big Lego kit. So, you know, how to make the raised beds, how to make the cold frame lids, all the sizes and everything for all of those different bits and pieces. Uh, preservatives that I've used, you know, how to actually make the raised beds, how to physically construct it if there's only one of you. Um, you know, how to make the uh, cold frames, um, you know, and all the different component parts of all of these. And then we get on eventually to, you know, how to manage them, venting them and all of that sort of thing. Then how to make deep versions of them, how to make all the low tunnels and all of that sort of thing. So I really like that. And then you can go back here just by clicking the basics up at the top there. Um, and I've got the same sort of thing for making sort of bean and pea frames and, and all of that using my simple way and I, you will find occasionally that I'll embed videos that other people have done where I think they're actually pretty good um, and there's just no point at all sort of duplicating content that other people have done a really good job of. I just embed uh, theirs in mine and uh, yeah so this is basically you know how I do all the sort of um, 
growing frames and how I net things and all of that. And that sort of changed over the years and you'll sort of see that reflected in here as well. Um, so what else we got in the basics? Still haven't done the section on paths, uh, which should do really, because I have got a video on paths, uh, but also sort of growing under cover. So there's a lot of advice here about um, how to grow under cover, all the different types of cover and the sort of pros and cons of all of those different types. Um, you know, growing in windy environments, growing in a polytunnel, sort of temperature control in a polytunnel, uh, successful sort of winter veg growing in the UK in winter, which is a little bit different in other countries. Um, you know, more about venting, lots of stuff about that. And then this is actually my most popular video of all the videos that I've done, the pros and cons uh, of mesh tunnels, coal frames, low tunnels, polytunnels, etc., etc. Um and yeah mesh and all of that so that's the basic section i think uh so it's pretty useful oh there's a bit on composting as well and i had a lot of fun doing that as well and i have a particular slightly unusual approach to composting um that works you know really nicely i think uh but composting is not very complicated you know there's a thousand of different ways of doing it they all kind of work after a fashion um, but you know, there's some sort of general advice on composting, things that I don't recommend, like these sorts of things. Um, and you know, once you get through all the sort of basics, then you know, I've got kind of my prescriptive system of how I make compost, and that is kind of conditioned by the fact that I've got four bins. Um, and so there's a kind of very specific way that I use those four bins to make a really good compost. Uh, and a lot of it, although I still do buy some in. So anyway, the reason I like doing this section because I just like doing all these little diagrams. I had a lot of fun on the rainy day. Right, so let's go back here to the book because I really want to show you how this, <laughs> this database integrates in here. Um, and actually, yeah, I do need to go back into the basic section. So the planning section in here takes you through my planning system. Now, I'm not obsessed with planning, I must say. Um, I like to have a rough idea of what I'm going to do. And my kind of rough idea is here in this bed plan. And if this is too complicated for you, I do recommend you look at this alternative here by Muddy Boots uh, or Nigel. Um, he's got a really great, uh, simple spreadsheet based mechanism that he uses and he makes that available that you can download it and everything. So that is really good. But if you are using my database, then I have a planning tool in the latest version of my database. And I'll talk about that in a minute. Um, but if you just want to look at mine, then there's two options that you've got. So basically you'll see these embedded versions here and you can kind of scroll through them. And this is the rough outline plan for my plot. And this is always live, so you're always looking at the sort of live view of 2023 here. So you've got two things you can do. You can kind of click here with this little arrow saying original. And if you click that, it'll take you to my bed plan for 2023. But it won't take you to that view. It'll take you to that view. And so basically, you know, you can browse this in kind of the full screen mode. And let me just make that the full screen mode. Um, so you've got the beds listed down the side here and a little picture of the beds because I've got no visual memory. So the only way I can actually visualize something is to look at a photograph of it. Um, so this is really useful for me to sort of figure out, you know, where a particular bed is, you know, so bed SR7, doesn't really mean anything to me other than it's on my plot and it's bed number seven and it's the west end of the bed. But if I click on that little picture there, um, then I can sort of see, oh yeah, that's the one. Um, so I find that's <laughs> it's incredibly useful for me. And then across here, of course, we've got the months and then we've got roughly what I've got planted in that bed for that month and where there's multiple things. Sometimes that's an interplant and sometimes it's a relay plant. And sometimes it means I just swap from one bed to the next in the middle of the month um, rather than the end of the month. And I kind of know, you know, just because obviously I've thought about this for a little bit and done it for seven years now. So I kind of know what I mean. Um, 
And so I really, really like having this kind of just rough outline, but I don't follow it too slavishly. Anyway, so that's kind of one thing you've got there. Um, and if you did want to get a copy of my data, let me just click here and I'll open it up for you. So this is what happens if you click that link. Uh, you get planning view or plots for sharing. And then you've got a few things you can do here. Um, so it's opening that up. So you can click on use data. Now, if you've got a copy of, uh, if you're using Airtable, then you can just choose a workspace in Airtable. So I could choose mine here. Um, and then choose a database in that. Um, and then sort of create this table. Um, and it will give you a copy of my table here with all of my data in it, which is, is really great. So you can then copy, copy and paste my data into your database if you want to and all of that sort of thing. And then if you click dot, dot, dot here, you can also just download a CSV file. So it's downloaded there and then we can click that and it'll open up in Microsoft Excel. And so basically now what you've got is again, all of my data with all of the sort of variety names for the months and all that sort of thing. It's a bit messy the way it kind of comes out, but obviously if you just um, tidy it up a little bit, then um, you can see, you know, th this is mine. Now you can do that for anything where um, you've got my data. So, so let's get back to where we were. And oh, where was I? Not oh, was there. Okay, so let's go back. Look. Okay, so that's pretty useful. And then there's also this view, which is really nice. Um, and this is a view of exactly the same data, but where I'm looking at pictures rather than the sort of text. And as I say, because I've got an overview, remember this is really useful for me again. And you can again, just click this kind of little arrow for original and it'll pop up here and you'll get the full view with all the little pictures. So we can go back here and then more videos about sewing and planning and, and all of that sort of thing. Um, and then we've got the sewing data. So I'm gonna pop over here again to my um, database and you'll see again this is showing you everything that I've sewn so far this year um, and I use this for planting as well so it shows things that I sewed last year but I have planted this year so that's why there's some things for 2022 showing in there uh, so you can kind of follow along um, and again you can kind of click here and you can open this up and you'll see um, all my data again. And of course, it's exactly the same thing. You could click here if you want um, and open that in Excel and you'll find you know, all of my, uh, you know, every, each variety, what type that variety is, uh, everything's done because uh, it's showing only the things that I've sown this year, when I actually sewed it when I'm hoping to harvest it. So, you know, that's the same data, all the same data that's visible on here. Um, and yeah, so that is pretty useful and we can go a lot further than that and I'll show you that in a minute. So there's a little bit more stuff on planning and record keeping and all that sort of thing, but I'm not gonna go through that. So I'm gonna go back to the book now. Um, and just quickly go through kind of the next section. So there's a section here all about my gardening app. And that is this database over here that I'm showing you. So we, the database that goes through all the types of fruit and veg that I grow, all the sessions of that fruit and veg, all the varieties, uh, all the seed packets of those varieties the bed roof bed plan, and then the detailed sewing log of what I've actually sewed. And that is structured, as you can see, 
here by month so you can see this is what I'm currently planning to sow in March and this is what I'm currently planning to sow in April and this is what I've actually sown you know in February uh, so you've got a lot of really nice data here uh, I'm going to go and dive into this in a little minute, just to sort of show you how you can use that data. Uh, but this section of the book describes all of this. So it goes through um, the kind of little video introduction, and I'll be adding this video introduction, this deeper dive video in a second uh, once it's finished. Uh, sort of limitations and, and all of that sort of thing but then it just goes through all the different tables and how they're designed and all of that so that is kind of where to go um, and then you know information on sort of how much space you need what to grow and there's lots of stuff in here you know so again when you're choosing what to grow uh, again it sort of dives into my database and I've kind of come up with a ranking scheme about all the different things that I grow and how I've kind of ranked them into sort of a priority order as to which are the best things to grow. Um, and I'm always sort of tweaking this over the years as I discover new varieties and new ways of growing things. And, um, you know, sort of kind of prioritize all these different things. But anyway, so what we've got here is a kind of list and you can choose to tune that to your own needs very easily by taking a copy of uh, the varieties table. Um, and, you know, so there's a way of doing that, of course, which is to open that up here and then say use this data and then export it to Airtable or export it as um, an Excel. Uh, database and then you can uh, Excel spreadsheet and then you can kind of play around with that to your heart's content um, so go back and right so and then we've got year-round growing guides so these are my attempt to kind of provide in like a a bit of a course on how to grow things all year round or as close to all year round as you can get. So how do you grow sort of peas and beans all year round, spinach all year round, potatoes all year round, carrots, um, other salad ingredients. And you can see that's amber. So that means I'm currently working on that one. Um, leafy and flowering veggies and, and all that sort of thing, the flowering brassicas and all that. And then these are the ones I haven't written yet. So I haven't done Asian greens all year round, even though I do now grow Asian greens all year round and stir fry ingredients all year round. So I do a lot of these things and still kind of got to write these, um, but they're quite nice. And then we've got uh, sort of my guide, eight steps to self-sufficiency. So kind of, you know, once you've got this idea of growing things all year round, uh, then I've got individual growing guides that go through each different veggie, type of veggie, uh, that I grow and in each one you know there's a sort of nice comprehensive uh, growing guide which are always again being improved so every year I get better at gardening and as I get better at gardening I update all of this so this is a living book again here we've got a sort of little embedded part of the database which goes through the successions of peppers that I grow and the reason I Partly the reason I grow successions is I don't have enough space to grow everything uh, to full size. Um, you know, if I did everything as a first early, for example, because the plants grow huge and I just don't have enough space. So some of them I, I grow smaller. Um, and there's, you know, lots of photos and more videos uh, on all that sort of thing. And again, another link into my database with my kind of recommended varieties. And again, that's always being updated as well new things and more videos about it, how to prick them out, how to sow them, how to pop them on, how to fertilize them, where to plant them, you know, how many plants to grow and all of this sort of thing. So, um, yeah, all pretty useful stuff. And then, uh, yeah, 
podcast. I'm not going to go into any, any more of this because you can just browse it yourself. But I've got a section on the back adapting to climate change, a lot of stuff on advanced growing techniques, all the sort of like interplanting, relay planting and all of that sort of thing. Um, high intensity growing and all of that. Um, polytunnel and greenhouse growing, lots of more videos and things on that. Uh, and then a section on gardening month by month, which I really like. Um, so this is a really short section. It just goes through each month and gives you an idea of what to sow, what to plant and what to sort of harvest in, in each month. Uh, with a few other bits and pieces like when to prune various different things and all of that. So this is quite a nice little summary. And then I've built on that by talking about what I actually do month by month. And I've put that into the reference information section of the book. And so the reference information section takes you through each month of the year. And we're going to take a look at... February. And so you'll see here that there's this exact same section that was in that gardening month by month thing, and it's not a duplicate section, it's kind of embedded in there. So if I update it in here, it updates it in the other one, which is quite nice. You'll find that in the book in lots of places, so everything's always bang up to date. And then the first thing you've got is my, my weekly diary entries. So you can sort of click into one of these and it just sort of says, you know, this is what I've been up to that week. Um, and mostly it's about gardening, but I do just sort of try and show that there's a little bit more to life than gardening. Um, so then there's what we harvested in that month. Uh, so you know, 23 boxes which is the boxes are two litres. So uh, 46, 46 litres of veg on the 26th of February and then the 17th of February, 54 boxes and 50 boxes on the 12th of February. Um, and then this is what we sowed or plan to sow. And then this is what we planted. Again, these are just direct views onto the database. Um, and then sort of tour videos and all of that sort of thing. So that is pretty useful. Now, obviously, if you're kind of interested in what to do in April or May or June, then obviously you can look at previous years. And um, yeah, my f friend in Gary in Hanoi at the moment, and he keeps wanting to send me videos of his holidays. Um, so let's just take a look at the sewing log um, just to kind of illustrate some of the things that you can do here so you'll see i'm sharing this view but also i'm sorting this and i'm sorting it by sewing date family and type so that everything's kind of grouped nicely and i'm filtering it to show only the things where the sewing month is february uh, and the date is after um, I don't know, 2021. Why, I don't know why I need that. But um, this is the beauty of Airtable, is the ability to filter and sort and create different views. So I can easily create, looking at the same database, a view for everything that we're planning to sow in March and everything that we're planning to sow in April. Uh, but what I can also do is pull up everything that I've still got to sew this month and that is easy to do because I just want everything that contains March uh, and has a sewing date after you know, and we're done let's get rid of this really I think but uh, and we're done is blank so you know I plan to sew it in March but I haven't done it yet um, but I've also got everything that sort of hasn't germinated yet. So these are all the things that I've sown but haven't germinated. And that is because germination is, the germination date is currently empty. And so I can easily pull those up. Uh, I've got all these things that have uh, germinated but haven't been planted yet. So these are all the things I've got 
as seedlings waiting to be planted out. So there's a lot of stuff waiting to be planted out. Uh, and then we've got all this stuff that's planted, but not that, not sort of harvested yet, and all this sort of thing. So all of this is done with filters and makes it really, really great. So if we look at varieties, for example, here I'm just looking at all um, the varieties that contain Salanova. And I can do all of these kind of, you know, really interesting things like, you know, these are all the parsnips, these are all the cabbages, these are all the cauliflowers, you know, these are all the Asian greens. And so I just love this. And all this is available to you just by going and looking at my database. And you'll find a link to my database, the complete database. So this whole thing, um, which you can kind of browse around. You can't change it, but you can take a copy of it, the whole thing as well. So um, with that, I think I'm going to sort of shut this down because it's probably been quite a long time. And uh, hopefully it gives you an idea of what you can do and what you can find in the book and how to use the integrated database um, once you're in the book. And as I say, most of this that I've shown you in the web browser, it all works no matter what you're using. So if you're using um, you know, a smartphone, it all works. If you're using a tablet, it all works. If you're using an Apple Mac or a Windows PC, it all works with native apps or in the web browser. I hope you like this quick video. My name's Steve, this is the Seaside Kitchen Garden and Allotment Channel, and I'll see you soon.